All right, I'm Dave at The Game Thing, and this video is a technical explanation for two videos that I've got up on YouTube. One is on my main channel, and one is on this channel. Both videos are very similar, as in they're both doing the same thing. They are like capture tests and stuff between two devices. One of those is an Atomos Ninja 5, and the other one is an Elgato 4K60. So anybody who's seen the video on the main channel, uh, you've probably, well, you will have come here to have seen this video, you know, to understand how that video was made. And for anybody who's seen the other video on this channel, exactly the same thing, there'll be links to both of those videos in uh, the description to this one as well. Anyway, so to the technical explanation and just to show exactly what went on here. So for some time I've been going round the twist and getting all bent out of shape about um, like the quality of capture, specifically for editing to upload to YouTube. Now the thing with game capture and stuff like that, you can actually capture you know 10 bit 422 and you can edit in 10 bit 422 and I'll show you all these parameter setups shortly. But most people only capture 8 bit 420. Now the thing is, if you were watching all this content back, say on a 10-bit monitor, then you would definitely see differences there because the 10-bit 422 version uh, would definitely be holding more color information. So you'd get like more dynamic range with the bit depth and more color information due to the chroma subsampling. So you would avoid things like banding issues and things like that. However, once these things are uploaded to YouTube, YouTube converts everything on the SDR uploads to 8-bit 420. So the argument here is, is it necessary to record 10-bit 422 and go to the extent of like that type of workflow when the end result is only going to be 8-bit 420. So to test this out, I played through the game and recorded it on two separate devices. So obviously the Atomos Ninja 5 is the 10-bit 422 recorder and the Elgato 4K60 Pro is only 8-bit 420. Now the codec being used on the Atomos Ninja 5 was ProRes uh, HQ and that is 10-bit 422. And then obviously the Elgato 4K60 only records, um, let's see, 8-bit 420 using NVENC. What it is, I've used a GTX 1650 as the encoder for the Elgato card. And also it's, it's worth noting there actually that that is an older card. It doesn't even use the latest NVENC engine. So just to be clear, one of these things records 8-bit 420 at only 140 megabits per second. And then the Atomos being the other thing is recording 10-bit 422. Uh, and I think it's about 1,860 megabits per second. So these are huge, huge differences. So anyway, what I'm gonna do now is show you the stuff in the timeline, just so that you know exactly what went on. Now, there's a split screen here. I'm just gonna switch that off for a second because what it is, when I try to run through the timeline here, because it is so heavy because of the types of codecs and bit rates involved, I can't play in real time. In fact, when I was doing this edit, I had to come down to a half resolution. As well. Yeah, I'll just play a bit now. Okay, so I had to come down to a half resolution because if I went full, it wouldn't play and then as soon as I start sticking things on like the split in the center and then the name tags and all that there was no way it was ever going to work so for the best part I was like on half resolution here that doesn't affect the output or anything it's just for me to play back with during the edit anyway so I'll switch the split off there now if I go full screen there in fact actually I think it goes there to full 10 bit when it's in pause mode but I'll put it on full anyway if I go full screen there you're probably going to look at that and you can't see any difference from left to right. However, that is made up of two separate recordings. So if I switch the bottom track off here, it'll just only switch to the right hand side. So the right hand side is there. So media, which the media, which is marked one, that is the right hand side. And then 
track two, which is the media, which is called to, is the left hand side. So what I'm going to do now is just show you that on the right hand side, the media there is ProRes 422HQ. And then if I come down to two, oh, actually, yeah, just ex explain what I'm doing here. When I right click and do properties, it's telling me what the properties are of these clips when I do that. I'm actually using Eddie's, uh, Eddie's 10 by Grass Valley here. Uh, most people probably wouldn't have seen this, so they may not know what I'm doing. I'm just showing you the properties of the media. So once again, right click properties, ProRes 422HQ, and then the bottom track, which is media name two. I just kept this dead simple. I just called the name one and the other name two. So if we come down here and do properties, as we can see, H.264 AVC. In fact, I don't know if I said H.265 maybe earlier. It's not, it's only H.264 as well, this actually. It's still there, it's still an NVENC encoding, but it's only H.264, not even H.265. And of course, like I say, this was done to the maximum that the Elgato 4K60 can do, which is 140 megabits per second and that one there being ProRes. Like I say, it's somewhere in the region of 1,860 megabits per second. If I've got that wrong, I will flash it on the screen now to let you know exactly what that bit rate is. But there's a humongous difference between the bit rates. And obviously one of them is into frame and the other one's intra frame. And then we've got the variation between 10 bit to 8 bit and then 422 to 420. These are like visually completely different types of recording. However, because once again, as you're watching this video, you're watching it back in 8-bit 420 on YouTube. And like I say, if you come down anywhere here, it's just basically the same stuff, which is just cut up and shortened for the edit. As we can see, ProRes is tra always track one because that is the name of the media. It's the same media on the track as it goes along. And there we see AVC and stuff. Okay, so that's the basic explanation of what's gone on here. And then at the end of it, you just see that there, but that is built up with ProRes on the right. And there, let's see, and the 8-bit422H.264 on the left. Okay, now the other thing to explain here is that the project itself is actually 10-bit422 as well. So let me just show you the project settings here. So if I go into the project setup, well, actually we can see it. it. It's when I say 4K, it's obviously UHD 4K. And when I say 60 frames per second, it's 59.94, but everyone shorthands these things to 4K 60. Anyway, so it's 4K 60. As we can see here, it's 10 bit. Now this is why CBCR basically, it, it's why UV basically 10 bit. Now, it doesn't show you the chroma subsampling here, but because we are in this 10-bit project, that is going to be uh, 422 anyway. So like I say, this is 10-bit 422 for the project setup. Now, if I then show you how I exported, and what it is for the export, I went to the best possible export I could using H.265. I could, of course, have like you know done a much better encoding as it were say even ProRes or something like that to upload but the, the file would have been absolutely huge and as we've probably guessed by now there'd be there's actually no need to go that high anyway but because I wanted to try and maintain as much fidelity within the picture I've done the highest possible thing I could do using H.265 so let me just show you the export that I've done here so where are we print a file so I chose HEVC here, so H.265, and then beyond that, I chose the NVENC encoder, so that's NVIDIA. Now, from here, I can go to a maximum. It's only saying 100 megabits there. However, the maximum I can actually do is that, which is 160 megabits. So, 160 megabits, I put the quality on super fine. And then I changed it to main 10, which gives us 10 bit. Could also be argued here that you may not even need to use 10 bit. However, there are certain advantages to using a 10 bit file for the delivery. I won't go into that right now because this has already probably been quite a boring explanation. However, there are certain technical advantages advantages to going 10 bit for it. Now, 
on the extended here I've gone to IBBP so that particular GOP structure or GOP sequence type and whatnot that's pretty normal for this type of stuff once again as well you know the difference between doing intra and inter frame encoding for the upload again it's very subjective as to whether or not you're gonna see anything any difference whatsoever by the time youtube has done its thing to it with these things it's probably more about the highest bit rate that you can afford to go to and as we've seen in this instance it is the maximum that nvenc can actually do at 4k 60. so obviously what i've done here is try to maintain as much of the quality from the timeline with an intermediate encoding which then goes up to youtube and then youtube goes and does its thing and brings everything down to much lower bit rates and then also converts that 10 bit 420 to 8 bit 420 as well for all of this stuff that it does because don't forget these are just sdr recordings here as well sorry just a quick edit here i've just realized i failed to mention something at this point which is very important what it is i've been doing these types of things for like many years uh, i started off encoding with really obscure like you know codex like what 30 years ago i used to do a lot of like mpeg1 vcd and stuff like that and went right the way through to like dvd blu-ray and so on and so forth as far as youtube is concerned i have done like too many tests that i care to mention as far as like you know working out quality and stuff now Part of my testing for this type of timeline has also been to upload uncompressed 10-bit 422. Now, they were only ever very short things like matters of like 30 seconds to a minute because the files are ginormous. Also as well, I have done like ProRes 10-bit 422 variations and certain other production codecs like DNxHD and also the one that Grass Valley used for EDIUS, which is HQX. Now amongst all of those things, no matter what I go up to as far as 10-bit 422 is concerned, whether that's a lightly compressed codec like ProRes or DNxHD or HQX or even do uncompressed, the end result has always been the same as the delivery that I've done here, which has been HEVC at um, like 10-bit 420 so yeah if anyone was wondering but dave you know you could have done 10-bit 422 within a number of different codecs have already done all this and the actual end result is always like basically the same i'm going to say end result don't forget here the final thing that has the main say on what happens with everything that you do is the actual youtube encode itself and don't forget as well if youtube was able to stream say the standard dynamic range of recordings at 10 bit 422 then yes of course at that point anything that's 10-bit 422 would be the way to upload but like i say i've done a zillion things and i've used like much higher bit rates and you know much much bigger bit depths and like chroma sub sampling for delivery and it's always youtube which is the deciding factor in all this anyway just back to the end of this video now okay so that's probably there about uh, the explanation for both of those videos and like I say, the reason why I did this was because, you know, I'm just one of these people who gets absolutely bent out of shape about wanting to do everything in the best possible way, right? So that's me just going nuts and all the rest of it. Also as well, just so you know, um, the recording was from an Xbox Series X and the output was definitely 10-bit 422 coming from that as well. Okay, so there we have it then. Uh, now, if anyone's gotten all the way through this explanation and stuff, uh, you, the chances are you're like me. You're a bit of a mad person who just wants the absolute best. So let me know what you thought of these tests and the explanation and stuff. And also let me know, honestly, could you see any differences on either side of that split screen now that you obviously know how it how it was done and you know for sure you know what the both like you know recording sources were and stuff let me know if there was anything within them 
playbacks that you think that was dead obvious, maybe not so obvious, or you couldn't even see certain things maybe. Yeah, so just let me know anyway in the comments to this video because I'm just one geeky messed up person who loves to do like tests like this and see if other people actually get onto these things as well. Anyways, I'm Dave at The Game Thing. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now. Thank <music> you.